testimony on the parables of the secrets of heaven and their true meanings. To many pastors, theological students, and believers who are attending this online seminar in Shincheonji, it is nice to meet you all. My name is Choi Il-hun, the MC of today's event. I would like to express my sincere gratitude to all of you who are attending the Shincheonji online seminar that is being broadcasted around the world. Before we start, let us pray with one heart and start this seminar. Dear Father God, who is thankful, gracious, and holy, we give you thanks for creating all things of heaven and earth and allowing us our precious lives. We also give thanks to Jesus for letting us be freed from our sins through the blood of the cross that He gave us. We give thanks and honor for having the words of God's a new covenant that no one has ever known before, but has been revealed to us and testified to us so clearly. We thank you for testifying the true meaning of the parables of the secrets of heaven and its reality. Father God, please allow the families of faith who are attending this seminar to see, hear, and realize. Please be with us in every moment so that we can gain freedom through the truth and guard our footsteps. Through this lecture today, please guide us so that it can be a valuable time to realize the true meaning of the beast, head, horn, tail, and also the order of the fulfillment of the prophecy in the Bible. We pray all this in the name of Jesus. Amen. We would like to inform you that this seminar, which is being held online, is strictly complying with the quarantine rules and social distancing. Every lecture is important, but today's lecture will especially be a very important and interesting topic. The expression lamb was used to describe Jesus 2,000 years ago, and believers who believe in Jesus are also called the sheep-like believers in the Bible. But how can a real person be an animal? In addition, Revelation chapter 13 uses the expression of a beast with seven heads and ten horns coming out from the sea. As we learned about the meaning of sea last time, today you'll also learn the meaning of the figure of beast and it'll be a time to realize and say, oh, this is what the prophecy means. Now it's time to receive the clear testimony about the figure of beast, head, horn, tail, through the instructor who will teach us today. I hope we will have the time to take the word in our hearts and will have a time to realize the word testified. We'll invite So Jung Min instructor from Thomas Trapp of Shincheonji Church of Jesus. Let's give him a big round of applause. It's nice to meet all pastors and saints around the world who have hope in heaven and earth. I am So Jung Min, a center instructor who learned the word from the Thomas tribe leader among the 12 tribes of Shincheonji. Our tribe leader learned the word from chairman Lee Mani of Shincheonji. We sincerely welcome you to today's online seminar on the testimony on the parables of the secrets of heaven and their true meanings. You would have heard about the figure of sea well last time. The sea mentioned in the Bible is a religious world ruled by Satan. And you may know that the dragon was a ruler of the sea, it was Satan the devil. Then today, we'll go through lesson 12 titled, The Figure of Beast, Head, Horn, and Tail. Do you happen to know the spiritual meaning of the figure of beast, head, horn, and tail? Many pastors watching this video will be aware of this spiritual meaning. However, I would appreciate it if you could listen carefully and attentively when I give you this testimony about it once more. First of all, let me explain the meaning of the parables. The beast in the prophecy refers to a person, and among people, it is referring to a false pastor who tells lies. Also, the head refers to the head pastor, and the horn refers to the authority figure, thus elder, who fights by belonging to the head. In addition, the tail refers to a false prophet 
belonging to a beast as a tail. As the beast is a false pastor, the head, horn, and tail refers to the bodies belonging to the false pastor. Then, let's find out why the answer of the parables in the Bible came out like this from now on by examining the Bible. The Bible is largely divided into four categories. It is divided into history, instructions, prophecy, and fulfillment. Among them, when distinguishing between books of history and books of prophecy, we can see that history records physical beasts, while prophecy records spiritual beasts. Even among spiritual beasts, there are the beasts belonging to God and the beasts belonging to Satan. The figure of beast, head, horn, and tail that we will learn today are actually referring to the beasts that belong to Satan. Then, I will now explain the answer to the parables. First, let's read the reference verse from the book of Revelation, chapter 13, verse 2. The beast I saw resembled a leopard, but had feet like those of a bear, and a mouth like that of a lion. The dragon gave the beast his power and his throne and great authority. Yes. If you look at Revelation 13 verse 2, it says that a beast comes up from the sea. But it explains that the appearance of the beast has seven heads and ten horns and looks like a leopard. Feet are like that of a bear. The mouth is like that of a lion. And furthermore, it explains that the beast received power throne, and great authority from the dragon. Then, what is the reality of this beast? You can see that the beast we think of and imagine cannot actually come up from the sea. And the beast with seven heads and ten horns is not really a beast that exists either. Then, Let's find out about what this beast is that is mentioned in Revelation 13 verse 2, which is a figurative beast. First of all, in order to understand a figurative beast, we need to look at the characteristic of a physical beast. The characteristic of beast is that they have natural instincts, but they don't have rational thinking. This is a characteristic of beast. Also, beasts cannot talk like humans, so beasts are beings that are difficult to communicate through human conversations. Also, a beast is not able to have dreams and hopes, so if you ask a beast, what is your dream, then the beast will not be able to understand the meaning of the question and will also not be able to answer that question either. Yes. Then, through the characteristic of these physical beasts, now let's find out about the reality of the spiritual beast. Then, first of all, before we find out about the reality of the spiritual beast, we must look first into the order in which the prophecy is fulfilled that is recorded inside of this Bible. As we see in 2 Thessalonians 2, 1-3, the Bible promises there will be the work of rebellion first, in other words, betrayal, then the work of destruction, and then the work of salvation will happen afterwards. When we hear about this, the word betrayal might be an unfamiliar expression that is used in the Bible. But the meaning of the betrayal is expressing an event turning away from God, thus turning away from God's words. People often make promises between each other, or even make covenant. However, when a promise is broken, we said that one betrayed. Likewise, this expression betrayal is used by God in the Bible when God's chosen people broke their covenant with God. Now, these chosen people who broke the covenant, God will not leave them, but 
Through the Gentiles, God destroys them as they violated God's will. And also, through the work of salvation, which is a way for the chosen people to be saved through the Savior, who comes to rescue them, is the order of fulfilling all the prophecies recorded in the Bible. Then, if the prophecy is fulfilled in the order of betrayal, destruction, salvation, then there must be a betrayer who does the act of betrayal, the destroyer who does the act of destruction, and the Savior who does the act of salvation. Therefore, all the beast that appears in the prophecy are referring to the people. A beast that is likened to a betrayer who does the act of betrayal will appear. A beast that is likened to a destroyer who does the act of destruction will appear. And a beast that is likened to a savior who does the act of salvation will appear. At this time, we should be able to accurately distinguish between the betrayer, destroyer, and savior through the words of the Bible. But would it be easy to distinguish the betrayer, destroyer, and savior simply with their outer appearance? Yes, you're right. It is not easy to distinguish through outer appearance. Also, among the betrayer, destroyer, savior, who is the one we should meet? Yes, we must meet the savior. Then, when these three entities appear, what will be the way for us to distinguish them? So, these three beasts, the betrayer, destroyer, savior, which is likened to a beast, there's a way to distinguish them. And that way of distinguish them is through the order of the fulfillment of the prophecy and the actions of each person. Then, let's find out about the order of what the beast of betrayal does, what the beast of destruction does, and also what the beast of salvation does. First of all, there's a beast that symbolizes the betrayer, and this is a being that used to belong to God, but now belongs to Satan the devil. So it is someone who changed whom it belongs to. When we see Matthew 7 verse 6, it says, Do not give what is sacred and pearls to dogs and pigs. In fact, no one will give to dogs and pigs anything that is very precious or valuable. Then, why does it say in Matthew 7 verse 6, do not give precious, sacred, and valuable things to dogs and pigs. The reason is, is because the precious and valuable things, although it is given to the dogs and pigs, the dogs and pigs will not know the value of it. Rather, it will harm those who give those precious things. Such entities are dogs and pigs. Then this dog and pig, if it is a figurative beast, then what is it actually referring to? In order to find that out, let's have a look at 2 Peter chapter 2, 20-22. If they have escaped the corruption of the world by knowing our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and are again entangled in it and overcome, they are worse off at the end than they were at the beginning. It would have been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than to have known it and then to turn their backs on the sacred command that was passed on to them. Of them the proverbs are true. A dog returns to its vomit, and a soul that is washed goes back to her wallowing in the mud. Yes. As we look at 2 Peter 2 verse 20 to 22, we see that the people who escape from the corruption of the world, they believe in Jesus. But these people, although they received the sacred commands of Jesus, they abandoned it. So these people are referred, as it says, the Proverbs have become true. The dog returns to his vomit, and a so that is washed goes back to her wallowing in the mud, is what it says. So these people, who abandoned the word of God, inside of the Bible are expressed as dogs and pigs. Therefore, to the betrayers, do not give what is precious 
and valuable such things as the Word of God. The reason why was because they do not know the value of God's precious words, and not only that, they will even harm the people who gave these precious things, the Word of God, to them. And also, what other animals would there be to describe the betrayer? As we see in Matthew 15, verse 24, Jesus said he was only sent to the lost sheep, not anywhere else. Now, the content of these words, this is when Jesus, as he was passing by the land of Duro and Sidon, there was a Canaanite woman who came to beg for her daughter to be healed because the daughter was being possessed by a vicious demon. This is the content of Matthew 15. At this time, Jesus said, I was only sent to the lost sheep of Israel, only to the lost sheep. So therefore, what does it mean by lost sheep here? Seeing how it says lost sheep, then it means originally there was an owner, but right now there is no owner. The chosen people that God chose, God selected, as they broke God's covenant, God left them, and it became a state where there is no owner. Therefore, these such betrayers are being called as a lost sheep. So when Jesus said, He came only to the lost sheep, the reason why is because Jesus, who is the Savior, He came in order to save the betrayers. So as we summarize, the figurative dog, pig, lost sheep is referring to a person who abandoned the word of God, a betrayer. Then, what will be the animals, the figurative beasts that describe the destroyers? These do not belong to God, but actually, they are the ones who belong to Satan. Now, let's read Isaiah 56, 9-11. Come, all you beasts of the field, come and devour all you beasts of the forest. Israel's watchmen are blind, they all lack knowledge. They are all mute dogs. They cannot bark. They lie around and dream. They love to sleep. They are dogs with mighty appetites. They never have enough. They are shepherds who lack understanding. They all turn to their own way. Each seeks his own gain. Yes, as we see in Isaiah 56, 9-11, to it is the ignorant shepherds, the one who lacks understanding, that appear. When it says lacking understanding, it means they're lacking realization, right? Then, God expresses these ignorant shepherds as the mute. We just heard that the beasts figuratively describing the betrayers include dogs, pigs, and lost sheep. Then, as the ignorant shepherds are called the mute dogs, it means these are the betrayers. Then, in Isaiah 56 verse 9, God said, Come, all you beasts of the field, come and devour, all you beasts of the forest. So these wild beasts here are referring to the fierce beast. And these wild beasts are referring to the destroyers who devour the betrayers. Then, these wild beasts, when would they have started their work? In Genesis 3 verse 1, there is a serpent that appears. But God described about the serpent, the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals that God had made, is what it says. Then, what kind of entity would be this serpent? This serpent was the entity that deceived Adam and Eve at the time of Adam. Then, how did we know about the serpent? Many people would have probably thought of this snake as a reptile snake. However, when we look at Matthew 13, 34, and 35, Jesus spoke all these things in parables, 
And by speaking in parables, he uttered things hidden since the creation of the world. So therefore, the, the event happened since the creation of the world in Genesis. It means there are many secrets hidden inside at that time. So the serpent that appeared in Genesis is not actually a reptile snake, but actually it is a figurative snake, which is explaining about the destroyers. Furthermore, when we see Jesus calling the leaders of the religious world, of the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, in Matthew 23, verse 33, this is what Jesus said, You snakes, you bruise the vipers. So, the snake that Jesus referred to is not actually a physical reptile snake. But, it was the false pastors who taught lies at that time. In other words, the destroyers were being called as snakes. Also, in Matthew 7, verse 15, it says, Watch out for false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ferocious wolves, it says. Then, as these false prophets who teach lies are described as the wolves who appear to devour the sheep-like believers, then we can also see that these false prophets are the destroyers as well. Also, it was the reference verse of today, right? In Revelation 13, 1-2, there is a beast that comes out from the sea. It has seven heads and ten horns, and this beast is like a leopard, feet like that of a bear, and mouth is like a lion's mouth, it explains. Then leopard, bear, lion, what do they have in common? Yes, that's right. The common thing about leopard, bear, and lion are that they're all ferocious beasts. Then it means it's not such a physical animal that is going to come out from the sea, but it is a destroyer that will come out. In other words, the destroyer that will appear from the religious world ruled by Satan is what Revelation 13 is prophesying. So, the figurative serpent, wolf, leopard, bear, lion is referring to the destroyer, false prophet, false pastor. So therefore, when we are explaining about this figurative beast, head, horn, and tail today, this beast is referring to the destroyer. Then, what kind of animal would there be to figuratively represent the Savior? This will be the animals belonging to God. Let us read John 1, 29. The next day, John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Look, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Yes. As we see in John 1, verse 29, Jesus is the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, right? Jesus, 2,000 years ago, He came to take away the sins of many people, like us. He came as a sacrificial lamb. And that is why Jesus is figuratively being described as a lamb. Then, the life of faith of us, who are the ones following Jesus, the Lamb, what kind of life of faith should it be? In Matthew 25, 31-34, it talks about when Jesus comes back to this world, He will gather all nations before Him, just like a shepherd separating the sheep and the goats, Jesus will shepherd the people who are like the sheep-like believers and the goat-like believers. Then, the sheep-like believers that is mentioned here, if Jesus is described as a Savior, the Lamb, the righteous believers who follow Jesus, the Lamb, are also described as a sheep. So therefore, what kind of life of faith should we carry? We must be the sheep-like believers and be able to inherit the Kingdom of Heaven. Also, in 1 Corinthians 9, 
It writes about the law of Moses. It says, Do not muzzle an ox while it is treading out the grain. But the reason is not because it is concerning about the ox. That's not why it's recorded the law of Moses. But rather, the people who are delivering God's words, God's workers, they are being compared described as an ox treading out the grain. Furthermore, in Revelation 19, verse 11, there's a white horse and the rider. The one that moves the horse will be the rider that rides the horse ride. Then what will be the reality of this? So the reality of the rider and the reality of the white horse, in order to know about this, as we see in Revelation 19, verse 16, there's the name of the rider, which is King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And this being is referring to Jesus. Also, as Jesus is a spirit, that flesh that the spirit of Jesus is working through is described as a white horse. Now, so therefore, as we summarize, the figure of sheep, ox, and horse is the group of salvation that Jesus is together with, or the people belonging to that group. They are being expressed as sheep, ox, and horse. Now, up until here, we looked at the meaning of the beasts that are mentioned in the Book of Prophecies. Then from now on, we will look at the beast that is referred in the book of instructions. Now, let us read Proverbs 30, verse 2 and 4. Surely I am only a brute, not a man. I do not have human understanding. I have not learned wisdom, nor have I attained to the knowledge of the Holy One. Who has gone up to heaven and come down? Whose hands have gathered up the wind? Who has wrapped up the waters in the cloak? Who has established all the ends of the earth? What is his name, and what is the name of his son? Surely you know. Yes. As we see in Proverbs 30, 2-4, it says, Surely I am only a brute, not a man. So, it is comparing to such a person, this is a person that is a beast, a brute beast, who does not know the Holy One. At this time, the Holy One is referring to who? Yes, you're right. This is referring to God. So the one who does not have the knowledge of knowing the Holy One, in other words, it is someone who doesn't have the knowledge of God's Word. So the beast referred in the Book of Instructions is a person who does not know God or know the Word of God. Furthermore, Psalms 49 verse 20, let us read. A man who has riches without understanding is like the beasts that perish. Yes, in Psalms 49 verse 20, we can see that a man who has riches without understanding is like the beasts that perish. Therefore, a person who does not understand the word of God is like a beast. Therefore, let us summarize. The beast that is mentioned inside the book of instruction is a person who does not know or understand God or God's word. So we can see this is the beast inside the book of instruction. Then at this time, we can ask a very important question. What kind of believer would I be in God's eyes? Am I someone who is like a human being, or am I like a beast? We should think about this ourselves, not in our own viewpoint, but in God's viewpoint. Then so far, as we have learned about the meaning of the figurative beast, now let us learn about the figurative head. Let us read the reference verse, Revelation 12, verse 3. Then another sign appeared in heaven, an enormous red dragon with seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns on his heads. Yes. 
The event of Revelation 12 verse 3, it is happening in a location called heaven. In this heaven, there's one entity that appears. This entity is the red dragon. The image of the red dragon is a beast with seven heads and ten horns. This entity of the beast with seven heads and ten horns, as we learn when we learn about the figure of beast, it was an entity that was coming up from the sea. Then, in Revelation 12 verse 3, this entity is now come up to heaven. Therefore, this beast coming up from the sea is a destroyer, and as we see the organization of this destroyer, it has seven heads and ten horns. In other words, it has seven entities and ten elders. Also, it has a tail, and with this tail, one-third of the stars of heaven are thrown down with this tail. Then, what would be the meaning of this? So therefore, at this time, about the figurative head, let us find out the meaning of it one by one through the Bible. Firstly, through the physical characteristic, we can understand the spiritual meaning, so let us look at the physical characteristic of the head first. Head plays a role in controlling and governing the entire body. Then, even the spiritual head will play a role in governing like this. Therefore, let us read the words of Isaiah 29, 9-10. Be stunned and amazed. Blind yourselves and be sightless. Be drunk, but not from wine. Stagger, but not from beer. The Lord has brought over you a deep sleep. He has sealed your eyes, the prophets. He has covered your heads, the seers. Yes, as we see in Isaiah 29, 9-10, there is an entity that is staggering. Then, as we can see this is someone staggering, we may think, oh, this is someone who's drunk. But actually, the reason why this person is staggering is because God has covered their eyes and heads, is what it says. Then, what will be the eye and head that is referred here? Eye is a prophet, head is a seer. So the head, it is referring to the pastor who delivers the word of God. Therefore, if our congregation members are compared as a body, the one who guides that body to the righteous way, who would it be? Yes, it will be the many pastors who's watching this video. Among all the pastors and saints who are watching this video, it will be the pastors who is leading the congregation members who received a very important task to lead the saints to the righteous way. So if you testify this testimony on the parables of the secrets of heaven and their true meanings to your congregation members, we believe you'll be the pastors who receive much respect and love from the congregation. Let's continue by looking at Revelation 17, 9-10. The seven heads are referred as the seven hills, seven kings. Then why are the seven heads expressed as the kings? In 1 Peter 2 verse 9, God uses the expression, the royal priesthood. Therefore, the pastors who deliver God's words are referred as figurative kings. Then the seven heads here, they are the seven kings, seven pastors. But these seven pastors, who would they belong to, that will also be important, right? So as we see in Revelation 13 verse 2, the beast with seven heads and ten horns received the throne, power, and authority from the dragon. So we can see this beast belongs to Satan, the devil. Therefore, the figurative head is referring to the head pastor. That is a figurative head. Then, what will be the meaning of figurative horn that is attached to the head and gives strength to the head? Let's read Revelation 12, verse 3. 
Then another sign appeared in heaven, an enormous red dragon with seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns on his heads. Yes. The location of the event in Revelation 12 verse 3 is also heaven. In this heaven, the red dragon appeared, and this red dragon has seven heads and ten horns. Then what will be the reality of the ten horns here? So firstly, by looking at the characteristic of a physical horn, let's find out the meaning of a spiritual horn. A horn is attached to the head and symbolizes authority. It also becomes a weapon that is used mainly in fights. Then let's have a look at this verse. In Revelation 12, uh, 17 verse 12, there are the ten horns. These ten horns are ten kings who have yet received a kingdom. Can there be a king who doesn't have a kingdom? Then the king here is referring to a pastor, and the kingdom is talking about the church that the pastor rules. This horn is a king, but doesn't have its own kingdom, meaning it has power like a pastor. But although it is such an authority figure, it doesn't have its own church. Therefore, the figurative horn inside the Bible is an authority figure who belongs and fights for the head, thus someone like an elder. Then, now let's find out about the figurative tail as well. Let's read reference verse, Revelation 12, verse 4. His tail swept the third of the stars out of the sky and flung them to the earth. The dragon stood in front of the woman who was about to give birth so that he might devour her child the moment it was born. Yes. As we see Revelation 12 verse 4, the location of the event is heaven. In this heaven, a red dragon appeared, and this red dragon has seven heads and ten horns. However, it has a tail, and the tail throws down one-third of the stars from heaven to the earth. Then, what will be the reality of this tail that can even throw down stars from the heaven to earth? Firstly, the characteristic physically about a tail, it is attached to the back of the beast, of the body. Then, through this characteristic, let's find out the meaning of the spiritual tail. As we see Deuteronomy 28, verse 15 and 44. Deuteronomy 28 is a chapter that talks about the blessing that God's chosen people will receive if they keep the covenant. It also records about the curses that the chosen people receive if they break the covenant. Among this content, verse 15 records about the curse the chosen people receive if they break the covenant. And verse 44 says, A person will not be the head but be the tail. Then what will be the meaning of the tail here? So let's read Isaiah 9, 14 till 16. So the Lord will cut off from Israel both head and tail, both palm branch and reed in a single day. The elders and prominent men are the head. The prophets who teach lies are their tail. Those who guide his people mislead them, and those who are guided are led astray. Yes. As we see from Isaiah 9, 14-16, the meaning of the tale is accurately and clearly explained. Tale is a false prophet who teaches lies. Then what does a false prophet do? Through the lies will deceive many people. So when we see verse 16, the one who deceives the people, causing them to fall, be destroyed, it is the tale, the false prophet. Therefore, this tale, where does it appear? In Revelation 9, verse 16, there is the army of Satan the devil, the mounted troops of Satan. But inside of this Satan the devil's army, the mounted troops, this horse, the horses have tail, and this tail is like a snake. So the tail of this horse is among the army that belongs to Satan and the devil. It has a tail which is a false prophet. And those false prophets are like snakes, meaning they belong to Satan and the devil. 
Therefore, the figurative tail, it is a false prophet that belong to the beast. That is the figurative tail. Then, the content that we learned so far, I will summarize in a picture. Now, when we look at the content of Revelation 13 verse 2 and Revelation 12 3 to 4 in a drawing, the location of the event is heaven, the tabernacle of heaven that God was together with. This place was spiritual heaven. This was a place where God was at and God's pastor, God's saints were. However, as they betrayed, who came up from the sea? It was a beast coming up from the sea. This beast is a beast with seven heads and ten horns. Then, who did this beast receive authority from? It is a dragon that gave its power, throne, and authority. Therefore, this entity is a destroyer. And, this organization of the destroyer has seven heads and ten horns, meaning there are seven pastors and ten authority figures who make up this one organization, and they're the ones who enter into the tabernacle of heaven. Then what would this destroyer do as it enters into the tabernacle of heaven? Of course, it came in in order to destroy the tabernacle of heaven. But, it is not just one entity, it has seven heads and ten horns, and it has tails, which is the false prophets. Then, what would they do with their lies? They deceive God's saints who belong to God and change them from being people who belong to God to now people who belong to Satan the devil. This was the entity who did this work of deception. Now I will deliver the conclusion. What is the spiritual meaning of the figure of beast, head, horn, and tail that we learned today? Beast is referring to a person, but the person in today's reference verse was a false pastor who teaches lies. Such a person is a beast in the Bible. Head refers to the head pastor, among those false pastors, horn refers to the authority figure who belong to the head, thus elders. Tails is the false prophet who belong to the beast. As the figure of beast is a false pastor, figure of head, horn, tail is also the bodies that belong to the false pastor. They are described as head, horn, and tail. Then, the prophecy of the Bible, when it becomes fulfilled and the physical reality appears, whether one is a betrayer, destroyer, savior, it cannot be known through the outer appearance. So therefore, according to the order of the fulfillment of the word that is recorded, we are able to realize and understand so therefore, we must follow this word, discern, see, and believe. Today, we learned Lesson 12, The Figure of Beast, and Head, Horn, and Tail. Next time, we will learn about Lesson 13, The Blood and Flesh of the Lamb. The instructor who will deliver the word next time will be even more skilled, competent, and more fun in explaining and delivering the word. We may have different denominations and affiliations. However, we are one in God and Jesus. I'll shout out, we are one. And by that, let's complete today's lesson. We are one. Let us pray together. Dear loving and graceful, Father God, who is full of mercy, we thank you for guiding us to the online seminar today of the testimony on the parables of the secrets of heaven and their true meanings. This era that we are living today, we believe it is a time of the fulfillment of the prophecy of Revelation, the second coming of the Lord. When the reality of the secret of heaven is revealed in front of us, Please allow us to be the many pastors and saints 
who can see and believe in the fulfillment. Our pastors, whom Father God you love, we pray that they will be able to see, hear, and understand the word and lead many saints to the righteous and proper way through your grace. I pray all this in the name of Jesus, who is full of love. Amen. Thank you so much for watching until the end. The content is directly related to the blood and flesh of the Lamb. The blood and flesh of the Lamb, when, where, and who will be able to eat it? This blood and flesh of the Lamb, the Word of Jesus, the Word of Life, what is the difference between the one who can eat it and not eat it? Please come to Shincheonji and please receive the testimony of the blood and flesh of Jesus. Let us all be the ones who are lead to, led to salvation. Yes, I believe it was a time of understanding and grace with the precious words. Next time, it will be the lesson 13, the blood and flesh of the Lamb. There will be a clear explanation on it. I hope that we will all attend next time and have time to understand. Also, in addition to today's words, if you are curious about Shincheonji Church of Jesus and the Revealed Word, please contact these numbers of each tribe shown on the screen. Let's do the Lord's Prayer, and we will complete all order of today. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and salvation forever. Amen. With this, we will complete today's Shincheonji online seminar, the testimony of the parables of the secrets of heaven and their true meanings. Thank you for being with us today.